Okay guys, welcome to another game analysis video. Today I'll go over my second game of this 2022 season against Engelholm away. So this was Engelholm's lineup in the game. Noticeable is number 15, Johan Odemo, who has played in the Swedish first tier for many years and he had a lot of success there. Uh, this is our lineup, uh, I'm number 11. Uh, and in this game we lined up with a flat 4-4-2 and I played on the right wing in this game. So kickoff time, you can see me out here on the right and we start off with the ball. Uh, this is our right back, Anton. Uh, when he throws it long, you can see that I'm positioning myself out wide. I first come and face him to receive the ball and as soon as as he throws it over my head towards one of our strikers I go down the wing because the space opens up and you see if he uh, our striker can head the ball down to me on the wing I have a lot of space to to take the ball forward and cross it into the box or create something dangerous but here you can see the same situation again you can see more clearly this time I don't get it either but the same basic principle is true here so the next play here, I uh, use one of my strengths. Uh, I have a pretty long throw in, so we try to use that to our advantage. So I just try to hit one of our strikers who's posi positioned himself in the box. Uh, I sprint to try to win the second ball and he probably should get a free kick there, the Engelholm player, because I, I foul him. So the next play, Engelholm's goalkeeper clears it up the field. Uh, Anton wins it, I'm there and I try to flick it forward, uh, I want to throw in. So here's the next play, Anton throws it long, you can see again here, I'm ready if the if Albin manages to flick it on in behind. Uh, doesn't work out, they win the ball, but we do well here to counter press, win the ball back. And here you can see Yasin wins the ball and he is uh, progressive uh, in his decision making. He seeks out the most dangerous option and that is to play forward because they are out of shape. So he finds me and I noticed that uh, the defender is coming in at, at speed to, to try to intercept the ball. So I just play it back one touch uh, and he's gone and I can get it back. And in this situation, I really, I can play it in a one touch, but the execution is just off. I could also, um, take two touch here as you see I have a lot of time on the ball and to really it's more important to put quality on the ball if you have the time to do it than I mean play it in a one touch here I'd say in this particular situation every every situation is contextual uh, so but yeah could have had two touch here so here's the next play Anton intercepts the ball as soon as I notice this that he can have time and space on the ball he can get his head up then I try to be progressive in my off the ball movement as progressive as possible so in this case they have their uh, back four quite high up so I make a run in behind uh, I get to the ball and here you can see I noticed that this guy who's following me he's about to dive in and I see the space in behind so I just try to kick it and go past him and he follows me I get a I get a free kick uh, so yeah that was positive play good decision making uh, try to be progressive uh, as progressive as possible good off the ball movement so all in all a pretty good play so here's another long throw in this one turns out better we had the ball down get it where we wanted Lacasso dribbles in and you can see it becomes a bit of danger just from that long throw in. So that's something to utilize if you if you have that or someone in your team has to try to use that to your advantage. Here Alex plays the ball forward to Marvin, I'm out wide. I get the ball and in this situation, if you can see here, um, you can see Yasin is making his run here into the box. Here I should really in the last situation, I could have had two touch, put more quality on the cross. In this situation, I really should just put it in, try to put it in a one touch, uh, right just in front uh, of Yasin here. And you can see I take two touch, the touch isn't that great either. Uh, and then I try to play the ball in and I play it like they managed to get there in time to, 
to clear it away for, for a corner. But uh, yeah, in this situation, really, I should really have put it in one touch. So it's about that decision making again. And the execution was a bit off. Uh, so another, this one is from pre pretty far out, but you can see I get it in there. Albin heads it on and we get it down. Yasin gets a great chance. They have a make a good block to get the. But you can see once again we create danger from a from a long throw in. So here's the next play. The goalkeeper clears the ball, and I don't know what happens here if I can't see the ball properly due to the sun or what's going on. But I completely miss it. Uh, I try to get back in position to defend. Uh, we can win the ball back through Yasin. That's great here. And here as soon uh, as I see that Yasin. Uh, gets his head up, he has time and space on the ball once again. In my off the ball movement, I try to be as progressive as possible. So I try to sprint in behind. He plays the ball to Albin instead, uh, and they can win it back. But as you see here, in this situation, I hesitate to press. And it's something that has been drilled into me during the course of this season. This was quite early on. But here, I stop first and then I press him. But if I just press him, as soon as I see that he gets the ball, I should just go, 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 and without any sort of hesitation. So that's just something to, to bear in mind if you play that sort, of, uh, that sort of style of play. So next situation, here Albin plays the ball back to Halid. Halid switches it to me. Uh, I'm out wide, I come inside, and here I really want a striker to to come into this space uh, so I can flick the ball forward to him. I think I do well, uh, but no one's just there to, to get onto that uh, flick on. Uh, next play, here is a defensive 2v1. You can see Anton is defending this winger. And here you can see a bit of miscommunication. He points to me that I should go to, to the winger and that he should follow the wing back. In my mind, I'm trying to follow the wing back who makes the overlapping run. So we're not on the same page there, and you can see that uh, they can get out and make... Uh, the cross wasn't that dangerous, but it could have been more dangerous. Uh, so it's just, you can see there, it's important to have good communication between you and your uh, fullback if you're playing as a winger. So here's another one of these defensive 2v1s. Your Anton gets beaten, he dives in, and I'm ready to cover him behind. And here I just wait for him to make his move back off and as soon as he, I see that he's trying to go down uh, go down the line I step in and intercept the ball so good defensive play there next one here's another 2v1 you see very similar to the last one the, the fullback is gonna make an overlapping run uh, down the wing and I'm with him and here you can see now instead Anton switches to the fullback and I it's not as clean as maybe it should be but I step out to the winger and I get a slight block in so the cross isn't as dangerous as, it's, uh, as it could have been. So next play, now I'll switch over to the left side, you can see me over in here. And Lacasso has time and space on the ball, he's gonna put a cross in. And you can see here, I think I'm in a pretty good position. He's quite, he makes quite an early cross, but I sprint and do my very best to get there, but I can't quite do it. Uh, could have scored there maybe if I started my run a bit earlier, but it was, as I said, it was hard to get there. Next play, two minutes left of the first half. Place it in. And now we're, we, we can see there's one, two, three, four, five players here in our box. England players, so the counter attack is really on. So I make a run down the, down the wing. I try to drive the ball forward, be positive. I see Marvin, I play him. I want to get the ball back here. Uh, Marvin decides to hold it up a bit, so I reposition. Nils, Nils gets the ball, so I go out wide again where I can receive it. I bring the ball forward, I have time and space on the ball. I see Lacasso coming in on the far post, so I put a left foot across in. He can head it down a bit too far, and here I get the ball again, and I just try to put it into the box again with one touch. I could have maybe brought it down here, and then uh, started running at the defender, uh, a bit panicky maybe, uh, easy to say afterwards, but I just try to get the ball back into the box here, and that's half time. 
Uh, nil nil. Quite a open game with chances at both ends, but no real quality uh, chance as of yet. So here's the second half kickoff. I'm now on the left wing for this half. Uh, first play, two minutes in. You can see here when the ball comes over and La Casa lifts it in, I notice that this may be a dangerous opportunity. So I try to be an opportunist and just maybe if the ball bounces over him, the defender, which it does, I can get there. But the goalkeeper does well to, to get out and uh, claim the ball. So in this situation, we win the ball. Yasin clears it forward. You can see me here, I'm out wide. Here the ball comes out and here I don't really want to bring it down because uh, I feel he's too close to me and it will just intercept it and I can see the space in front of me. So I just try to head the ball into that space and then use my speed, which is one of my strengths again. Try to play to your strengths as often as possible and when you get the opportunity to do so. So I head the ball forward into this space. The ball keeps on bouncing, I head it again. And here it's about that crossing decision-making. Uh, the ball is bouncing and here I shouldn't play it in on one touch as I try to. I don't even have that much support in the box. As you can see, our strikers haven't made it in yet. So maybe fake the cross, chop it back, take him on 1v1. Uh, I stress a bit too much here and try to play the ball in too early uh, when it would have been better to take two touches or more to get the ball in, into the box. You can see we win the ball. Alex goes wide to give an outlet to Seb, he gets the ball, I'm out wide here, I will get in now, and in this situation I sh could have taken it in and run down the line, uh, instead I tried to, I overcomplicated in this situation, I try to go past him on one touch to the inside, and it fails, we get the ball back though, so no worries, but don't overcomplicate it in that situation, better to just take it in to your feet and then try to beat him down the line and it was a good opportunity to do so. So here's the next play, a corner comes in, you can see me here, I'm ready for the second ball and it comes out to me, take a pretty good first touch and here I have to get the ball into the box, I hit the first man, uh, Haldi does well to, to prevent the counter attack, but really just the first touch was good, the decision making was good, get the ball into the box, we have a lot of players there, get the ball over that first defender. Otherwise, so just an execution problem, the decision making was spot on. So here's the next play, you can see Alex plays the ball to Nils, one touches it to Yasin, this is one of my best plays of the game, I stay out wide, good position, and then I make the run, I get it, and then I put in a great cross, I see Marvin, I get it into him, he gets the shot on goal. So one, a chance created from a great cross with the left foot, and this time, yeah, I think one touch was the best option I think we had two players in there so yeah good decision and good execution and that often leads to better chances and we got a shot on goal in that situation so here's the next play I think I have a pretty good position here Laka is driving inside uh, I get the ball it's a bit bouncy uh, and here I try to go for the element of surprise so I hit it on one touch towards the far post Pretty good shot on goal. Uh, could have been, maybe gotten a bit more power on it, uh, but I feel I think feel it was the right decision. Could have surprised the goalkeeper. Uh, many players would have just took the ball in and then uh, went to the defender. But I, as I said, I went for that element of surprise and it almost paid off. So the next play, they're attacking Engelholm. Get a shot on goal. Seb says it. Nisi clears it away and here I get the ball and we spoke at half time in this game I can remember that we wanted to be more direct when we won the ball back and punish them in behind so once I got the ball here I look forward for the strikers to make the runs in behind because uh, Engelholm's um, back four is out of position uh, so I play it in behind but no one is there and no one is making the run um, so yeah, I think that was the right decision based on the context of this game. Not always the best decision to just hit it forward, but in this game, yeah, uh, I think it was a good decision. You can see the next situation, I'm out wide here. Albin gets the ball, does well, hold it up, play it out to me. Now I'm 1v1, this is one of my favorite positions to be in, just outside the box. I can see that Alex is making a run. Uh, 
behind this defender, so he's gonna pull him a bit, hopefully. So I opt to go for the inside, uh, and then try to hit that far corner. You see I get crowded out in the end, there are two players there, so I just try to get the shot off as quickly as possible, uh, and he goes quite a bit wide uh, this time. But once again, a positive play, I think it was the right decision to, to go for a goal in that one. It comes across from Anton, me and Angel are right in the box, the goalkeeper gets out to play mid, and then you can see here, I'm trying to sprint back to get back on the right side of this, this uh, player, uh, and I do well, and you can see they stress and we get another throw in and another opportunity to, to get the ball into the box. So once again, another throw in. see we get the ball into a dangerous position but no one is there to, to collect that second ball and get a shot and go. Another corner, goalkeeper clears it away, it's the counter attack is on, you see me and Lacasa is chasing back here, try to prevent the goal, it's two minutes left of ordinary time. Here Yasin wins it, I just try to head it forward into my own path but I get a great pass to Yasin and we can, we can counter it the other way, you can see I sprint forward to get involved in the attack. He plays it out wide to Angel, and Angel gets a bit too far with his touch, uh, and the danger, they can clear the danger for it that time. Great position for me, Nessie coming out on the overlap. I approach the defender 1v1, I cut the ball to my right, and then I play an in swinging cross, which is one of the most dangerous cross crosses you can play uh, statistically. And you can see it almost results in a goal this time. Um, so yeah, this was also one of my better plays of the game. I was direct. You can see Marvin almost got there. The goalkeeper wasn't really sure of what to do with the ball. So he uh, played it safe and got it up for a corner. And there is the full-time whistle. Uh, nil nil. A game with plenty of chances, but none of the teams could, uh, could get in front. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the analysis and that's all for this time and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.